Hey guys, and welcome to the new video in this Neural Networks and Deep Learning tutorial. In this video here, we're going to talk about how we can create our own callback functions when we're actually like training our neural networks in Keras and TensorFlow. So in the previous videos, we talked about like the built-in callback functions that we can use from Keras. But in this video here, we're mainly going to focus on how we can create our own callback functions and then use that to lock some data and get some information from our training loop when we're actually like training our neural networks. But first of all, remember to join the Discord server. I'll link to it down in the description here. And you can go come join the channel here, chat with us about neural networks, deep learning, artificial intelligence, computer vision, and stuff like that. And you can now also be a member of the channel here if you want to support the channel with a small monthly fee uh, every month. And everything will go to make more quality content and better gear for the videos here. So let's now have a short recap over what we talked about in the last video about the building uh, build call it function that we have in Keras. So we have these different kind of variable callback functions um, in Keras where we talk about like the early stopping. So we want to stop after a number of epochs where our model hasn't improved. And when we're looking or like looking at some specific metric that we're specifying. So if that metric is not decreasing or increasing anymore, we're just like stopping the training of the neural network and then we will restore the best weights uh, and so on. We could also have some callback functions so we can reduce uh, the learning rate. For example, if we hit a, a local minimum in the loss function, then we can actually like reduce the learning rate um, if our model is not increasing or improving anymore we can also have the csv logger where we lock the, some data to a csv file uh, and so on so if you want to use these different kind of call like functions that is already available um, in tensorflow and Keras, make sure to check that tutorial out and that video out uh, and then you can just use those functions in the fit function when we're training our actual neural networks but in this video here, we're mainly going to focus on how we can create our own callback functions uh, when we're training our, our neural networks in TensorFlow and Keras. So we can actually like create this uh, class here, which is a custom callback function. And then we just specify this uh, carriers.callbacks.callback. Uh, so it is like a class that we just passed to this custom class here that we're actually like creating. And then we can actually like specify a different kind of like functions. So if we want to do something like in the beginning of the training loop, at the end of the training loop, or like after each epoch, before we start an epoch, after an epoch, or like even like during an epoch, we can specify different kind of things. We can change the learning rate. We can change some of the hyperparameters. But we can also do some locking where we look at the different kind of metrics um, before training in, inside of the epochs and stuff like that. So we have a lot of different kind of possibilities uh, that we can do. And I'm going to show you in code how we can actually like do it and how we can use our own callback functions in TensorFlow and Keras. So we're not jumping into Google Code Lab here. And in the first couple of blocks of code here, we're just going to import different kind of uh, frameworks that we're going to use. So we're going to use NumPy, we're going to use TensorFlow and, and Keras, and the different kind of like modules um, or classes built inside of Keras. And in this video here, we're going to use the MNIST uh, data set to actually like create callback functions when, while we're training on the MNIST data set. So we can do some locking and specifying some of the parameters uh, during the training process. So we're just going to run this blob of code here. So we actually like load in the modules that we're going to need. And then where we're going to train our neural network, uh, we want to train it on the GPU. So we need to set up the GPU uh, with this blob of code here as well. So if we run this blob of code here, we can now see that we have one uh, GPU available to train our neural network. Then we're going to import the MNIST uh, data set here, where we're just going to use the built-in data set from, uh, from TensorFlow and Keras. So we're just going to call this MNIST.loadData. We're going to store uh, our training images in this X train uh, variable here, and then the corresponding labels for our images in this X train uh, variable here. We're also going to have a data set for our, uh, for our test images here as, as well. So if we run this blog code here, we will now just download uh, download the data set here from uh, from TensorFlow. And now we have actually like stored in these two variables here. We're going to do some reshaping as well. And then we're just printing out uh, the five, uh, five first uh, samples here of the training labels. So we are operating with, uh, with handwritten digits uh, when we're having this uh, MNIST uh, data set here in TensorFlow and Keras. Then we're going to have actually like just a function here so we can plot what is going on in our data set before we're actually like passing that data uh, through our neural network. So now we're just running this function here. Uh, so if you don't, if you want to go more into details with some of these different kind of lines of the code here, make sure to check the, the previous videos out in this tutorial here, where I go over like step by step what is actually like going on in these scripts here that I'm running. So in this example here, we're just going to uh, plot the first ten images here in our in our training set. So we can see here that we have like five zero four one um, here. We have a nine two one three one four. So these are the images here that we're actually like going to train uh, our neural network on. And then when we're training our neural network, we're actually like going to have these callback functions that we create ourselves. And then we can lock some of the data while training this neural network. 
So now we're just going to create a, an, a, an arbitrary neural network here with a number of um, filters here or like kernels inside of our convolutional uh, two dimensional layers. And the con convolutional two dimensional layers here is followed up by a max pooling layer. And then at the end, we have our actual like uh, class predictions or like our, our classes down here. So uh, at the end uh, of the neural network here or in the last final output layer, we have 10 neurons because we have 10 different kind of classes that we can predict on uh, with this MNIST data set here. So if we run this blob code here, we now have created our model that we're actually like going to train. And we can also create a sum over here of the model so we can actually like see layer by layer and the total number of parameters that we have in our neural network. Then we can go down here and compile a neural network before we're actually like going to create the callback functions that we're going to pass to the fit function, which actually like does all the training of our neural network. So if we compile the model here with, with the atom optimizer here and the standard uh, default learning rate, then we can actually like go down here. We know that we have these built-in callback functions that we went over in the last video. So make sure to check that video out if you just want to use these uh, this early stopping here, reduce learning rate on plateau, uh, or like model checkpoint if we want to store the best model while we're training on neural network. But this video here, we're going to focus on creating our own callback functions. So as I showed you in the slides, we have this custom callback class here that we can create. And then we can see we have all these different kinds of functions here uh, where we can do something inside of those functions. So for example, if we want to do something when the training process or like when the training loop starts, we can do some different kind of things inside of this function here. And then when, when we're actually like training on neural network, then it will call these functions here after we actually like stop the training or like start the training after an, an epoch begins or an epoch ends. We can also do it uh, before we actually like testing the neural network that we have trained after a certain prediction or like after we are training the batches. So we can actually like go down into each epoch and looking after each batch has, uh, batch has passed through our neural network. So our each epoch will actually like um, will actually like have a number of different kind of batches when we pass it through uh, through our neural network. So we can actually like both go into our uh, into epoch by epoch, but we can also go into the individual batches that we're passing through our neural network in each epoch. So we have some different kind of possibilities here when we're creating our our own uh, callback functions here in Keras. And then we can just write whatever we want here. We can dock some different kind of information. But the most important thing here is that we have this locks here where we can actually like call these keys here. So the keys here are different kind of hyperparameters or the different kind of like metrics that we're, that we're looking at. So if you, for example, want to have the loss or the accuracy while we're training on neural network, then we can actually like look at this lock, um, lock variable here uh, that we just specify up here in the, uh, in the parameters here to the function that we're going to call. So if we just run this class here that we can that we can now actually like do something with. And if we go down here and we can also use some different kind of uh, callback functions that I'll go over as well. But if we start with this one here, we just have these custom callback functions here that will just write out some logs after each epoch or like after each pass that has been passed through our neural network. So if we go down here to the actual like train the neural network, then we need to specify like the batch size first number of epochs that we want to train for. And then down here, we specify the callbacks just as the original uh, where we have the built-in callback functions where we just specify them here. But this video, we're just going to uh, to the custom callbacks here that we just created a class for. So if we go down here and actually like run this blob code here where we actually like specify our own callback functions. So now we can see that we're now starting started training the neural network here and we can see that we get a lot out here um, in the output. So we can see if we just go up to the start here, we just start with like we're starting epoch zero of training and we got no lock keys here. We can see that now we're, we're printing out some other different kind of stuff. So we can see here for the first uh, batch here. So this is actually like the first batch in this epoch here. So we're going to run through 270 uh, batches per epoch. So in the first batch here, we actually like have the start of the batch here. We still have no lock keys, but we can see here at the end of batch one here, we actually like get some lock keys now because now we have connected like well, now we have actually like calculated the loss and also the sparse categorical accuracy in this case here. So now we can actually go in here for the first batch here and get these values here uh, for the lock keys here that we had that we can now see here. And then at the start of batch two here, we can now see that the, the lock keys is now empty again. And then it just keeps on doing the same thing here uh, for the rest of the for all the different kind of batches here and the number of epochs that we specified. And then we can go down here and see that we have uh, this loss here and this accuracy here after like actually like running uh, these number of um of batches here so we can see 
uh, we got some lock, different kind of lock keys here. We can see also the loss here and the accuracy for that batch. And then we can see here the batch time. So how long it actually like took to pass that that batch, uh, batch through um, our neural network and stuff like that. So we have some different kind of possibilities um, by just locking the data. So in this case here, we're just locking the loss and the spouse get a goal or accuracy. And then we can actually like go in and, and get them from the individual batches or epochs when we're just using these different kind of like uh, callback functions that we created up in this class here. We could also specify the different kind of like learning rates um, and stuff like that in the in the classes here or if we want to lock some other different kind of information or want to do our own operations or calculations after like for example an epoch ended or just uh, after we have passed a batch through our, our neural network but the more important things here is actually like that we can calculate or like print out uh, the loss here and the error where we can use the locks here um, as well so it's kind of the same here, but in this case here, I'm just going to show you like how we can actually like print out uh, the locks here from the batches. So in this in this class here, we're just going to, to create this class here, loss and error printing callback. And again, we just need to pass this callback a method here or like this class here um, as a parameter, and then it will just take care of it and it will actually like use that um, as a callback function. Then we can go down here and take individual examples of the ones that we just created up above here. But in this case here, we want to at the end of the training, training uh, like and at the end of the training batch here we want to specify like for batch and then the number of the batch the loss is and then we want to uh, to print out uh, the loss for that specific batch when we're training on neural network and then we just have this locks here uh, so first of all we have this batch here which is the not the, the batch like the batch number that we're currently at and then we have these locks here that we just saw up above that we can then get like both the loss and also the sparse categorical uh, categorical accuracy uh, if we specify it in here so then we actually like have the batch here and the loss and then we're just going to print that out for both uh, the end of the tr uh, a training batch and also at the end of the test batch in this example here and also when we end an epoch we're going to uh, print out the average loss as well after an ended epoch so if we run this uh, class here um, we're now like create this class here with these different kind of callback functions um, inside of it and then if we go down to our training loop um, again here that we can actually like just use this callback function here where we just specify this class here that we just created in this callback uh, parameter here to the fit function so if we run this block of code here now we can see that we can actually like get out the loss for each of the bases, uh, batches that we're passing through our neural network so we can see here for batch one here the loss is uh, 0 0.02 and then for batch two here it's it's 0 0.01 and then it just keeps doing that for all the 270 batches for the first epoch and then it goes to the next epoch and then it does all of these all of the same things again so if we go down here to the end where we have the 270 here then we can see at the end here we actually like have the average loss here so we print out the average loss as well which is specified in the function at the class uh, as well so after each epoch we're actually like printing out the average loss and then inside of each epoch we're printing out the loss for each of the individual batches that we're passing through our neural network so the last example here that I'm going to show you is how we can actually like create our own learning rate scheduler. So if you don't want to use the already pre-built one into like a carriers and TensorFlow, uh, then we can actually like specify our own learning rate scheduler. So we can actually like have full control of what is going on with our learning rate and how the learning rate actually like improves and how it improves through the training process of our neural network. So the setup here for actually like creating our own learning rate scheduler is that we're going to create this class here again and then we're going to use the function where we actually like want to update our learning rate so we want to update the learning rate when a new epoch begins then we just have some different kind of like a uh, setup here where we actually like need to specify uh, where the learning rate is so the learning rate is uh, at this back end here and then the get value and then we need to uh, so actually like go in and get the specific uh, uh, learning rate for that model that we actually like uh, are, are already running so we have some initial uh, initial learning rate that we specify and then we get that value and then we're actually like going to update that value with our learning rate scheduler uh, in this example here so the first lines of code here is just like a setup for actually like creating this learning rate scheduler here and then to actually like specify what the different kind of like what we want to change the learning rate to and when we want to change that learning rate um, as well so in this example here we're just going to to specify at a specific epoch that we're going to, to change the learning rate when we hit that epoch so down here we can actually like create this learning rate schedule here so at the first epoch we want to run with this learning rate here and this for the second epoch we want to learn uh, to, to run with this learning rate here so 
after it goes through these different kind of epochs it will now change the learning rate to, to these specific values here so this is just one way that we can actually like create our own uh, learning rate scheduler but if you if you want to change the learning rate in some other way after like uh, after an epoch or before an epoch begins you can specify that um, as well and and like actually like specify how we want to change that learning rate so down here we actually like have the learning rates uh, scheduler which we're actually like going to pass this um, lr2 and also the, the epoch so we're going to pass this lr uh, schedule here to this function down here and then this is like kind of like a helper function to retrieve the schedule learning rate uh, based on the epoch so the things we just specified up here and this is the actual function that we're going to pass in uh, to the schedule in it uh, up here in the class so it actually like runs through these different kind of things it changes the actual uh, learning rate here um, so this is just like the values down here in the back end so if we go down here to set value then it will actually like set the value here uh, that we get from these different kind of things here when we have this learning rate scheduler so this function will return the, the, the learning rate uh, that we're now at so if, for example we have at, at first the, at the first epoch here at the start of the first epoch then we want to run with this learning rate here we go down to this function here it will now return this learning rate we go into this uh this class here that we that we initially uh, and uh, initiated and then we can actually like go in here and set the value down here so we set the optimizer learning rate here with this schedule learning rate here that we specified up here because we need to initialize our custom learning rate schedule here with a function that takes care of like what is going on with our learning rate while we're training on neural network and that function is this function down here that we specified and this this function here it just takes this uh, lr schedule here and then just goes over like the different kind of epoch and set the learning rate uh, for that uh, corresponding epoch so if we run this blog code here we have now created our own learning rate scheduler and if we go down here to train the neural network again as we did in the previous two examples we can now just comment this one out here and then we can get this one here we have this custom learning rate scheduler class here or like that we're going to initialize uh, initialize an, an object with and then we just specify this learning rate schedule here so this is the function that we created our, by ourselves we pass that to the, to uh, to this class here and then it just takes care of all, all of it then it goes through each epoch it sets the corresponding uh, learning rate and then it will set that value in the carrots back end here so the actual learning rate when we're training on neural network so if we run this blob code here it will now do the it's a different kind of things here so we can see for the first epoch we have a learning rate of uh, uh 0 0.001 and then for the second uh, epoch here we have a learning rate of 0 0.05 and then a 0 0.01 here because we have an initial value here at the start and then we change that afterwards corresponding uh to the ones that we set up here in our learning rate schedule here so this is how we can actually like create our own custom callback functions here in Keras. So that's pretty much it for this video here guys we've been over like how we can create our own callback functions and how we can actually like use them here in Keras. so most of most of it is actually like just a uh, setup and then we can go into these individual functions and specify what we want to lock or what different kind of hyperparameters uh, do we want to change after an ended epoch or after an ended batch so thank you guys for watching this video here and remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video here and also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future because this will help me and the youtube channel out in a massive way I'm currently doing a computer vision tutorial where we're talking about different kind of uh, techniques within computer vision and we're doing some camera calibration, stereo vision, optic detection and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that tutorial, I'll link to it up here or else I'll just see you in the next video guys. Bye for now.